Welcome in everyone. We're going to let people file in. If you'd like to come online and tell us where you're from, we always like to know where our audience is at. Please feel free to put in chat, say hello to us. Texas, Nevada. We have Toronto, yes. Yeah, I saw Canada. You may want to make your popsicle red, white, red. <laughs> <laughs> See New Jersey, that's where I'm at, New Jersey. There we go. All over. I love it. 198. Let's give it one more second here. A couple more people. All over. Dustin, Florida, that's not too far. Here, it's a good destination right now. I just see a, a Georgia in there for you, Mandy. Yeah. Another Florida. Ohio, that's where I most recently lived. Feels like home <laughs> still. Okay. Well, Morris County, New Jersey. I am the next county over for them in Somerset. Nice. We're neighbors. Uh, pouring rain in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, it's about to rain where I'm at. So <laughs> we'll see how this goes. <laughs> it's getting let's dark and it. windy out there. Another, let's give it another five seconds, 10 seconds if people get in here. All right, let's get started on this. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's class, the Windsor & Newton Watercolor Red, White & Blue Popsicle. My name is Tim DePack, and I am from Windsor & Newton, and I'll be your moderator today. I'm being joined by Mandy Peltier, who will be your artist instructor for this class. And Mandy will be taking you through today's class by providing information about the products being used, showing you some of her favorite watercolor painting techniques, and creating this refreshing piece of art using the Windsor & Newton Cotman watercolor paint with the Sketcher Pocket Box set. Before we begin, I'd like to let everybody know that there was a sketch available before the class that you could have printed out. If you do not have that, we can put that link in the chat for you on the side if you wanna download it. Um, I'd also like to let everyone know that the class is being recorded and will be available 24 hours after the class has been ended. It'll be found on michaels.com or the Michaels YouTube channel and we'll put the links on the side in the chat for you as well to reference to. Uh, with that being said, you may choose to follow along and paint with Mandy or sit back, relax, and watch Mandy create this piece of art and then follow along and create them with her while watching the replay at a later date. With that being said, I'm gonna hand it over to Mandy. All right, thanks, Tim. Hey, everyone. I am really excited to be back with another class. I am really excited about this one. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen I've gone a little wild <laughs> making a lot of these popsicles because I think the technique is so fun. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to my other camera so we can get started. All right, so I always start with an overhead view so you can see all of the supplies and I'll quickly just run over them so you can make sure you have everything you need. So you might notice I have a slightly smaller palette. We won't need to mix as many colors today for this project. And I'm once again using the Skechers Pocket Box set. It's just 12 colors, but you can easily expand it through color mixing, which I really love about this set. Glass of water. I'll be working on an eight by 10 sheet of professional cold press watercolor paper. I'm using the Windsor & Newton Professional. I do think this project works a little bit better if you're using 100% cotton paper, but it will work on whatever paper you have. And I am also gonna be using a number four and a number six round brush, a graphite pencil and eraser for sketching the line drawing. And then you might say I have two sets of paper towels. I'm gonna to be teaching you a wipe and lift technique today. And so one pile is for blotting my brush. And then these other two are for lifting some color off of my paper. But we'll talk about that when we get there. We have a lot to do before that point. So I'm gonna go ahead and set everything aside except for what I need to quickly transfer the line drawing or to draw the line drawing. All right, so I need my eight by 10 sheet of paper, my graphite pencil, my eraser, and I'm going to pull over my printed outline. I think it is so much easier to draw the outline if I have it right next to me and I'm looking at what I'm doing and what it's supposed to look like. Maybe I can even scooch this down too so you can see all three here. All right, so one thing I want to point out is if you have already transferred your line drawing, then you can just sit back and watch this part. 
If you think it would be a little bit faster for you just to trace it, what you could do right now is hold the printed outline up to a well-lit window with the outline facing you. You can place your eight by 10 sheet of cold press watercolor paper over top. The light from the sun, unless it's raining where you're at, like it is where I'm at, <laughs> will shine through the line drawing. You'll be able to see it through your working paper and then you can just trace right over it. And you could probably do that in the time it's gonna take me to draw this with everyone else. So with my graphite pencil, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to draw a rectangle. That's the overall size of the popsicle. So I'm just going to start by drawing kind of a line at the top. That's about the same length as what I see on my actual outline. And then I'm going to draw two lines that are about the length on the sides of the popsicle. I'm just going to draw a basic rectangle at this point, and then I'm going to point something out. So when I draw, I always like to start by drawing the basic shape that I see. And so for the popsicle, the basic shape that I see is a rectangle. So that's where I'm going to start. Uh, but one thing I want to point out is on this outline, you may notice that the bottom sides are just a little bit wider than what's on the top. So it sort of angles down on the sides just a little bit. So I'm going to just maybe mark on the left and right bottom side just a little bit, and then I'll draw just a, a slight angled line down to that little mark I made so that I can just make the bottom part of the popsicle a little bit wider than the top. And then I'm going to go ahead and erase the first left and right side lines that I drew when I just drew the basic rectangle shape. Okay. And now what I'm going to do, so I have kind of my rough looking rectangle. I'm now going to round the edges. So I'm just going to draw curved lines on each of the corners. I'm just going to round them. And then this is where I can kind of make some adjustments. I can kind of go over all the lines again to make sure they're somewhat straight, somewhat cohesive, just little adjustments. You can rotate if it helps you maintain control. It sure does me. All right, and then you can just sort of clean up any graphite marks that are still remaining. Now what I'm gonna do is basically the same process on the inside, because there's two indentations on this popsicle that serve as sort of the dark recessed sections of the popsicle. So I'm going to draw two long but skinnier rectangles right down the middle. And I'll start with this far left one because I can better gauge where this far left line is supposed to go on this left indentation based on the far left edge of the actual popsicle. So I'm gonna kind of start up towards the top and then go pretty much all the way down. There's just a little bit of space at the top and bottom of each of these indentations. They almost go all the way down and they're maybe three quarters of an inch wide or so. So I'm just doing the same thing. I'm just drawing two indentations and then I'll judge them, see if I made one a little too narrow, if I need to widen one up. There's always room for adjustment. This is a pretty simple outline. It just takes a little practice getting um, these lines symmetrical and whatnot. And you know, you could use an, a ruler. If you have a ruler, it could help you draw the lines a little bit straighter. And you could measure what's on the outline if that would help you transfer it. But we don't have time for that today. <laughs> so we're not gonna do that today. All right, so I'm gonna widen this up just a little bit more to make it symmetrical. And then I'm going to also round these corners, just like I did the popsicle. Round the indentations. So mine's a little bit rough, but I'm gonna clean it up here. I like this one's our Newton eraser because it has little tips on all the sides. So it's easy to just do some detail erasing, some small areas. All right. And I would say this is probably good enough. We can always make some other corrections with the actual paint. And so the very last thing I want to do to my outline is draw the popsicle stick. So I'm just going to uh, just freehand draw it. So I'm going to draw a line down on the left side. I'm going to curve the bottom and then bring it back up to the top to draw the popsicle stick. So I'll hold that up so everyone can see just a little bit better. My little line drawing here. 
that we drew pretty quickly. This would look a lot neater if I had taken my time or just traced what I had initially sketched. So that was nice and neat and there's no eraser marks. Um, but because this is more of a practice session, just do the best you can. And you can always rewatch this class when it's uploaded to the Michael Store YouTube channel tomorrow. Um, and I also provide written instructions for my classes to kind of help you follow along too. All right, so um, I we're gonna mix two colors. In some of my classes, if you've taken some of my previous classes, sometimes we mix all the colors at once because it just makes the most sense for that project. For this class, we're going to mix colors as we go. Uh, so we're going to start by mixing the two colors we need for the popsicle stick. So I am going to set my line drawing aside for just a second, and I'm going to pull down my pad of paper towels for blotting my glass of water, my Skechers pocket box set, and my little artist palette here. And I'm going to use my number four brush. So if this is your first class with me, I'm going to kind of talk you through the little phrases I use and the technique, I guess you could call it, or just way of how I mix colors. So the first thing I do is I haven't used this brush yet today. It's completely dry. So I'm going to stir it in the water for a few seconds to help those bristles absorb the water evenly, because the last thing you want to do is work with a brush that's half wet and half dry. And then I'm going to use my number four brush as if it were a spoon. And I'm going to place two scoops of water into one well on my palette. So literally like a spoon, I'm going to do one scoop, two scoops. And this is what I'm going to use to activate the dry paint on my Skechers pocket box set. All right, so to mix this sort of light khaki beige color, we're going to use the uh, yellow ochre color and we're going to use the white color. So to use the yellow ochre color, um, I'm going to do what's called a pass. So I'm going to take my brush and I'm just gonna run it into the yellow ochre color just a handful of times. And then I'm going to stir it into that a little pan here or container that has the two scoops of water in it. And then I'm going to wipe it on the edge of my palette to release some of the excess paint. And that's one pass. And I'm going to repeat, and I'm going to repeat that one more time to do a second pass. And I'm going to stir that into the same little well on my artist palette. And then what I'm going to do is swish my brush in the water to clean it. I'm going to blot it on a paper towel, and then I'm going to add enough white to it until I have a light khaki color. So it's going to depend on your pressure. I'm using pretty moderate pressure to stir my brush into the white, and I'm always going to clean and blot as I go into the white so I don't turn it yellow ochre. And I'm just going to add enough white to it until it's sort of like a light khaki color, sort of like what you think of when you think of a popsicle stick. So I'll kind of hold that up here. So yeah, it's just a little bit lighter than what the yellow ochre is on its own. And that's because we tinted it with white. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my little painting or drawing down and I'm going to cover the entire popsicle stick with this light kind of khaki color. And I'm still using my number four brush. So I'm just going to apply it to the entire stick carefully working around those edges also the curved bottom. And then I'm going to darken this color we mix by adding another color to it. And then we're going to drop that into some of the wet sections on the popsicle stick. So to darken this color, we're going to add the burnt sienna color. So the burnt sienna is the lighter of the two browns on the Skechers pocket box set. It's more of the red brown. And I'm going to uh, probably do three passes of this color to darken it up enough. And we want equal paint to water ratios. So if your paint is a little bit too thick, like mine is, because we've been doing so many passes, you can add another scoop of water to that well just to kind of thicken it up a bit. Or to actually not thicken it up, to, to uh, make it more paint, uh, an equal paint to water ratio. So then I'm going to take some of that dark color I just mixed, and I'm going to drop it in right at the top of the popsicle stick right at the bottom curve of the popsicle stick. And then I'm also going to just run this brush up the right side edge of the popsicle stick. And I'll hold this up so you can see a little bit better. And I'm going to let that first color I mix, that khaki color, and I'm going to let this new darker beige color bleed and merge into each other organically as they want. So you can see that I'm not fussing with them. I'm just letting them merge into each other organically, all right? So that's the first step. And we got through that pretty effortlessly. So good job, everyone. And so I'm cleaning my brush. I'm blotting it on my paper towel. And then we're going to mix 
three more colors. They will be the first colors we apply to our popsicle. We're going to mix a red, a white, and a blue. <laughs> so we're going to be using colors straight out of the Skechers pocket box set. We will once again be using the Chinese white for our white. We will be using the alizarin crimson for our red, and we will be using the ultramarine blue for our blue. The ultramarine blue is top row, second from the right. It's the blue that looks more like the blue you would think of when you think of the American flag or the British flag or even the French flag. So just that uh, true blue kind of color. So we're going to place two scoops of water into three new wells on our palette. All right, so two scoops into three new wells of our palette. And into one well, we're going to do probably three passes or so of white. We're gonna do three so or passes of red and then three or so passes of the ultramarine blue. So I'll start with the white. And remember, we're going for equal paint to water ratio today. So you'll get a feel for what that is, but if you're not sure by just how you can feel it by running your brush into the water, you can always use a scrap sheet of paper and uh, paint a little paint onto that scrap sheet of paper. And if it's about a 50 to 60% opacity, you're good. All right, and then to the next well, I'm going to do red, the alizarin crimson, which is such a pretty red color. Depending on how you use it, I think it looks a little pink at times. And then the more you layer it, the more red it looks. So I really love that color. Okay, and then I'm cleaning my brush in between each color. And it's really important between the red and the blue because red and blue make purple. <laughs> so if you don't clean your brush, uh, when you move from the red to the blue, you'll mix a purple instead of a blue. So unless your flag colors are white, red, and purple, <laughs> you'll want to make sure your brush is clean <laughs> when you mix your colors here. Maybe right. a question? Yes. I have a question for you. Someone in the audience asked, and I know you've done this before, if they yeah. do not have white, how can you make the color white? I know there's a couple colors you can mix to kind of emulate that, correct? Uh, but you can't really make white with watercolor paint. What I would do is... Or shade, um, like a shade of it so you can kind of make it yeah. stick out a little more. So for this very first step, I would just place water on the white stripe and no paint. And on the next step, I can show you how to make a really light gray that we'll be using for the shadows. All right. But I said this in my last class too, I really encourage you to get a set that has white in it because white is one of those really important colors. Like you can mix black really easily uh, to darken colors, but to lighten colors, you can add water, but then it's going to change the paint to water ratio. And with this particular project, it is important to have equal paint to water ratio with all of the colors. So adding white to lighten will keep the paint to water ratio consistent and the same across all the colors versus having one that's more of a wash and then others that are more of a paint mixture. I hope that makes sense. But good question. Thank you. And I, I know I run out of white a lot. So it might even be that you have white in your set. You're just out. I do use a lot of white. So, okay. So we're going to start actually do this. Everyone grab your graphite pencil. Cause this will help you. I'm going to draw two lines that are parallel to each other to separate this popsicle into three stripes. Cause it's going to help me with where to place my paint color. Otherwise I may add red where it's supposed to be white or white where it's supposed to be blue. So I'm just doing some really light uh, horizontal lines to uh, mark out where the red stripe will be, the white stripe and the blue stripe, just as a kind of a loose guide for me. And I'm going to switch to my number six brush here. Um, so I have not used my number six brush yet today. So I'm going to give it a stir in the water, just like I did with a number four. And let me explain what we're going to do here. So we are going to add either red, white, or blue to each stripe. I want the red to just very gently merge into the white. And I want the, the blue to just very, very gently merge into the white stripe as well. If I were to add the red stripe and then immediately apply the white stripe right where the red ends, the colors were more than likely just completely merge into each other um, in a very, uh, I don't want to say traumatic way. I don't know what the right word would be to where we'd have to do some real cleanup work. Um, so in order to help the red more gently bleed or merge into the white, we are going to paint the top half of the white stripe first, and then we'll paint the red stripe working from the top down. So that way, by the time we get to where the top of the red white stripe is, 
it will have already had a chance to sort of settle into the paper just a little bit. It won't be dry yet, but it will just be um, partially wet or even partially dry. And then what we'll do is we'll paint on the bottom half of the white stripe. Then we'll paint on the blue stripe, but we'll work from the bottom up so that the same thing will happen where it will allow the white stripe just a second to sort of settle into the paper and start to dry before we have the blue meet up with the white. So I hope that makes sense. Now I'm working at a drafting table. So that means I'm working at a slight angle. So every single time I've practiced this class, my red still merges pretty um, boldly into the white. So I'm gonna show you how you can clean it up in case it does happen to you. Cause it's gonna happen to me since I'm working, gravity is working against me today <laughs> as far as this goes. So uh, we're gonna start with the white. And I'm Another going to say it's just a hot day and it's melting a little bit. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I like how you think, Tim. All right. So we're going to start with the white. I'm going to load up my brush here and I'm just going to wipe it once or twice on the edge of the palette. And I'm going to paint on really just the top half of the white stripe. And you really don't even have to paint the middle. It's just basically where the white is going to, or where the red is going to meet with the white. That's really the only place you need to add the white paint to. And then you can clean your brush, blot it on a paper towel. And now I'm going to add red to the top stripe because the top stripe is red. And I'm going to try not to rotate my work too much today because I think it's probably confusing for those of you at home. But I have to tell you, it's hard for me not to rotate my work. <laughs> it helps me work from it helps when I can work from the same angle. Um, but so far, so good. I haven't messed up yet. So <laughs> yay, Mandy. All right. So I'm applying red to the top of the red stripe. And I'm using the number six because it's just allowing me to get coverage a little bit more quickly. And I haven't yet met it up with the white stripe. I think I am going to turn it for this. So the last thing I'm going to do is add red just where it meets the white. And you'll probably see where it's going to bleed in since I'm working at an angle. Huh, not as bad as in some of my practices. So that's, that's nice. That's a good surprise today, but you can see these little spider webs or these little bleeds uh, where the red meets the white. You can clean that up real easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swish my brush. I'm going to blot it on the paper towel several times. So it's wet, but not soaking wet. And then I'm literally just going to press it down on the white and I'm going to pull it across. And then you can flip your brush to the other side and repeat. And you can see how that really softens it that where they merge into each other. And you can repeat that another time if you need to. All right. So this is, that's kind of a soft introduction to a wipe technique, honestly. So after you have the white to where it's just gently merging or the red gently merging into the white or the white gently merging into the red, we're going to add white to the rest of the white stripe. Don't apply it all the way up to the red because we don't want those two colors to merge into each other any more than they already have. We're just going to let them start to settle and dry at this point. And then once you have white on to the rest of the white stripe, I'm going to clean my brush, blot it, and I'm going to add blue to the blue stripe. But I am going to start at the bottom and work my way up the top. And this again is just so the white paint has a chance to kind of settle into the paper before we hit it with the blue. And I haven't had the issue with the blue really bleeding into the white like the red did. But again, I think it's because I'm at, a, at an angle. All right, so as many times as you need to load your brush with more paint, do it. Just have the last thing that you do be uh, meeting up the blue with the white. All right, and the amount of brush you have or the amount of paint you have on your brush also makes a difference. If you don't have that much paint on your brush, the, the bleed is going to be less than if you have a lot of paint on your brush. So if you loaded your brush up like super, super a lot and um, maybe didn't wipe it on your palette, the transition between the two colors is gonna be a bit more dramatic. I think dramatic was the word I was trying to think of earlier. So you can see it's just a nice kind of soft transition between the three colors. And we're going to set this aside for just a second because we're going to mix three more colors. We're going to mix a dark version of the red, a dark version of the blue, and a really light gray that will serve as our dark version for the white. All right, so I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to pull all my paint stuff down again. I'm going to use my number four brush again because I'm using my number four to mix colors today. I'm going to pull out my color wheel. I haven't done that for my last couple of classes. So you guys are in for a treat today. But for if you've taken my classes before, this will just be review. So as review, 
uh, if you mix colors that are opposite of each other on the color wheel, like red and green or yellow and violet or orange and blue, if you mix them basically in equal parts, you will get a neutral color, like a gray. If you add them just in part to each other, it'll just basically de-intensify the color you're adding it to. So and, and kind of darken it really. So if you were to add green to red just a little, it would make the green less vibrant and a, a little bit darker. And the same if you were to add red to green. So we are going to darken our white paint by adding just a little bit of Viridian green and just a little bit of red of the alizarin crimson. So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do that. You may need to add a little bit more white to your well. I'm going to to mine, cause we're gonna, we're done with the white paint on its own. We're now gonna mix a, a light gray. So I'm just starting off with the base of white and I'm gonna clean my brush, blot it on a paper towel. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to take just the tip of my brush and I'm just going to daintily wipe it a couple of times on the alizarin crimson like this. I'll hold it up so you can see. Just dainty, dainty. And I'm gonna stir it into the white and it's gonna make it like a soft powder pink or like a soft pink color. And I'm gonna do the same thing to Viridian Green. Just daintily wipe it a couple of times, stir that in. Gonna hold this up so you can see this sort of looks like a mint color at this point like a soft mint so i need to add another wipe of red okay it looks a little bit better still a little on the minty side another wipe of red and now we've gone a little bit too far pink so i'm going to do a real soft wipe of green and ah, uh, now we're there okay so now i have like a, a nice mouse gray or like an elephant gray or like a felt gray, I've heard it called different things, just a really nice soft gray. Now, if you added way too much red or way too much green and you have a dark gray, just add white to lighten it up. And if you were that person asking about not having white paint, what you'll wanna do is just add a little bit of red and a little bit of green to one well of your palette. And then you're gonna to wanna to add water to it to dilute it and make like a light gray wash. And then you'll use that on the white stripe, all right? And once you have your really pretty light gray color done, we're going to mix a dark red and a dark blue. So I'm going to add two scoops to two new wells on my palette because I'm not done with my regular blue or my regular red. We're still going to use those. So to mix a dark red and a dark blue, we're going to mix red with burnt umber and we're going to mix ultramarine blue with burnt umber. Somehow my burnt umber and my yellow ochre have got switched in my Skechers pocket box set and I couldn't for the life of you uh, tell you how that happened and it's throwing me off. So the yellow ochre is supposed to be here and the burnt umber is supposed to be here. I don't know how that happened. So your burnt umber is your dark brown in your set. So I'm going to start by doing maybe three passes of alizarin crimson into one well of my palette. Just like we did when we were mixing the regular red. And then I'm going to do a pass a, of the burnt umber into it. And I actually think I need maybe another pass. And so adding the burnt umber to the red will darken it. All right, and give us a pretty dark red color. And we still want that equal paint to water ratio. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the blue. So I'm going to do maybe three passes or so with the blue. And I'm gonna darken it up by adding burnt umber to it. And that's gonna give us like a navy color, a dark blue navy color. And if it looks too dark to you, if it almost looks black, because I have mixed black in my classes before by using ultramarine blue and burnt umber, you'll want to add just a little bit more blue to it uh, just to make it more navy color. So I'll hold it up so you can see. All right, pretty palette, I think. Pretty, pretty palette. All right, so are we ready for the next step? All right, so I'm gonna set my Skechers pocket box aside again, my water, my palette. This should be pretty good and dry, or at least dry enough that we can get started. We're gonna start with our red stripe and then probably do our blue stripe and then do our, our white stripe in the middle. All right, so what we're gonna do right now is I am going to add the regular red to the indentations on the red stripe. And then I'm also going to add red to the edges of the red stripe and just a little bit to the middle section of the red stripe. So if you need to add more red to your palette, you can, you just put a little bit of water in your well and just mix up a little bit more of that alizarin crimson. And then you'll see what we'll use the dark red for in a second. So I'm gonna start, I'm using my number four brush. We're gonna use the number four brush for the rest of the project. 
And so I'm going to start by adding red to each indentation that's on the middle of the popsicle. So the left indentation, the right indentation. I'm just covering that whole thing with the regular red, not the dark red. We'll use the dark red in a second. So both indentations. Andy, as you're doing that, I'm just gonna let you know that we're halfway through, 30 Great. minutes into it. Uh, I also wanna let everybody know in the audience that the project is being recorded and in 24 hours, it will be available on michaels.com and the Michaels YouTube channel. And there's been a lot of people in the chat that were looking for the directions. It was not in the booking section as a link, but I will make sure that when the video gets posted, that the instructions get included with a link along with the sketch so that you're able to look at that as you're following along in Mandy's replay on the video. Thank you, Tim. And I always add them to my website too. Um, when the class is uploaded on the Michael's Store YouTube channel, it'll also be embedded on my website and I'll have links for the outline and direction. So um, hang in there and, and I, you'll get, you can get that for me too if it's not in the notes section of the video. All right, so I'm now gonna add red to all of the edges of the red stripe. So I'm gonna add it just to the left side edge of the popsicle. So it's really just the width of my number four brush. I'm going to add it to this upper left edge. I'm going to go across the top of the popsicle with this color and along the right side edge and that upper right curve. All right, so we're just starting to build values slowly, slowly. So I just outlined the whole stripe and then to the middle part of the middle of the popsicle. I don't know how else to say this. I'm going to take my brush and I'm just going to run it through the middle of the middle. So I'll hold this up so you can see. There's still a little bit on the right of it and a little bit of the, on the left of it. So I just kind of applied it to the middle part of the middle. All right, just like that. And we're gonna repeat this process to the other stripes, but before we do, I wanna show you what we're gonna use the dark red on. So clean your brush, blot it on your paper towel and the dark red. I'm gonna add the dark red to the inside edges of each indentation. So I'm going to make sure my strokes are on the inside edges. I'm gonna go up the left side, the top, and down the bottom. And I actually think my dark red needs to be a little bit thicker paint-wise. It's not going on as dark as I'd like, but I'm going to stick with it for now. And I'm gonna do that to both the left and the right indentation. So I can hold up so you can see it's a little bit darker. It looks a little bit recessed all of a sudden because we added that dark value to the edges. Do you see that? Isn't that cool? And so by the time we're done, when we do the wipe and lift technique, uh, it's really going to look recessed and we'll keep adding dark colors to just continually build up those dark values. It's all about values for me. Um, that's how you get a little bit of realism in your artwork is with getting your values right. Okay, so now clean your brush and on your paper towel. And let's go ahead and move on to the gray. Um, so with your light gray color, we're gonna add light gray um, just to the edges of each indentation. I put a little bit there in the middle because I got distracted there for a second. So just to the edges, the, the left and right edges of your indentations, it's totally okay if the red bleeds into the gray. That's actually gonna create a little bit more shadow for you with your grays. That's gonna look, work in your favor. So you can see that some of the red bled into the gray. I'm okay with that. That's all right. It's gonna work in my favor. And I'm gonna clean my brush so that I get that red paint off of it, that bled into the gray as I was applying it. And then I will apply the light gray to the very left edge of the white stripe, the right edge of the white stripe, into that middle of the middle and I'll meet it right up with the red. So same thing as what we did on the red stripe, we're just doing it with the light gray this time. And we're gonna do the same thing to the blue stripe, but to the white stripe, we're not gonna be adding a darker color to the edges. It's just gonna be the gray and then we'll allow the red and the blue to kind of bleed into it to darken it even further. So for the blue stripe, we're gonna start with just our ultramarine blue. I'm going to apply blue to the indentations on the blue stripe. It's okay if you're a little bit messy with it because we're going to use the wipe and lift technique here in a second. And that's going to be really fun and lift a lot of color. And then I'm going to add it to all of the edges of the blue stripe. So have it meet with the gray, go down the left side, the bottom left curve, the bottom edge of the popsicle, the lower right curve, and then right up the right side, meet it up with the gray. And then the middle of the middle <laughs> with this color. 
And it's starting to look like a popsicle, isn't it? Pretty cool, huh? Looks okay. Great. So I'm going to give you all a second to catch up here. I want to demo what we're going to do next. What is called, I don't, I'm calling it the wipe and lift technique. So I'm going to set my paint aside for just a second here. And I have three little, um, swatches here with just a little bit of red paint. And I made these yesterday. So the paint has really had a chance to settle into the paper. Hopefully this isn't going to backfire on me. If you know what I'm saying. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean my brush really good. I'm going to blot it on my paper towel so that I have a wet brush, but not a soaking wet brush and how we're going to lift color from this piece. Um, so I have student grade paper. I have professional grade paper. I'm going to show you it works on all of them. Um, you may just have to use a slightly different technique than what I am. So because this paper, the color lifts so easily with a slightly damp brush. So to lift color, I'm going to take my slightly damp brush and I'm going to use a hatching stroke where you're putting your brush down, you're lifting it, you're putting it down, you're moving it. So I'm not moving in a back and forth manner. I'm lifting my brush in between each stroke. And I'm going to gently just wipe onto the swatch. And some papers, you kind of need the paper towel to press on it to lift it further. So do you see what was lifted there? So some papers like this one, you can lift with just your brush. It lifts really well with other papers. You kind of need the paper towel to help you lift that pigment. So I'll show you on another paper here. This one is a student grade paper. I don't want to give the name brands, but um, I just want to show you they'll work on whatever you're using. So this one actually lifts okay on its own. I'll hold it up so you can see. You can see where I put the wet brush, it lifted the pigment. And then I can use a paper towel to lift it further to reveal the paper. And I'll show you it works on this one too. It works on whatever you're using. You just, some of you may not need to use the paper towel as much. Some of you may need to use it more often to help lift the pigment. So basically the rest of this project is lifting paint to kind of give it that wet icy look to pull out the values and then making adjustments with our colors as needed like i will likely add more dark color to the inside edges of the recessed portions i may add a little bit to some of the edges I mean, we'll just see how it goes but how i'm going to start out to demonstrate this lift technique is once again i'm going to clean my brush you're going to clean your brush pretty often. If you're moving from the blue stripe to the white stripe, clean your brush. If you're moving from the white stripe to the red stripe, clean your brush. Otherwise you may be okay. Once it stops lifting color, then you may want to clean your brush and start with a, um, a damp, but not soaking wet brush. I don't know if you can see this. I probably won't pick it up on the camera, but there's a water droplet that is drooping from this brush that wants to drop off. So you don't want to work with the brush that is this wet. You want to make sure you blot it several times so that there's no water droplets coming off, that it's wet, but not soaking wet. And I'm going to start on the right side edge just next to the indentation. So I'm not going to be pulling from the indentation. I'm going to be pulling just next to the indentation. And I'm just going to run my brush in that hatching stroke manner along just next to that uh, right indentation on the blue stripe. So you can see how mine is lifting without me having to use the paper towel. Do you see that? How I lifted some color there? But if you need to, you can use your paper towel and just dab it on where you applied your wet brush and it will lift even more. So it kind of depends on what look you want. Um, I will say that... Um, You'll just want to be careful with it. Take your time. You can always clean your brush, blot it, and then go over it again to lift more. If you're a little bit afraid to use your paper towel, or if you're a little afraid you're going to lift from other areas, I will say too, um, with your paper towel, you'll want to kind of constantly be turning it in your hand. If you use it to help lift color, because the last thing you'll want to do is put some blue paint on your white stripe or some red paint on your white stripe. So every time you use it, you'll just sort of want to move it in your hand a little bit so that you're not putting wet paint in a spot where it doesn't belong. So I'm going to use this technique, this uh, wipe and lift technique, and I'll probably do left less lifting with the paper towel because the paper I'm using just doesn't really need it. And I'm going to work my way all the way up the right side edge of the right indentation. So I'm going to go over the blue. I'm going to go over even the white. And then when I switch to a new stripe color, I'm going to clean my brush. And I'm just continuing to wipe. And if you need to lift, 
So you can always, like I said, you can just go over an area a second time or even a third time to lift more color. And you'll see how it's just pulling out the values there. I mean, how fun is that? I just love it. I have to show you this. So while you guys are kind of get getting caught up and getting a feel for this, I told you I went a little hog wild. I just think this technique is so fun. It makes me um, honestly a little giddy and it's probably a little weird that I'm so excited about it, but <laughs> you can use this technique and you can do it on other popsicles. I made like a fudge sickle. I made an orange creamsicle, my favorite. I made this watermelon. I mean, how fun is that? So, I mean, it's the same exact technique, just different colors. Um, I also made a ice cream cone yesterday using the same wipe and lift technique. Uh, it maybe took a little bit longer because there was some more steps involved, but I mean, still it was the same wipe and lift technique. And then another idea you can do, I made this one a couple of days ago. So Winsor & Newton sells this iridescent medium. So it's like glitter for your watercolor paint. And I added it to my red, white, and blue. And you probably can't see it on camera, but it makes the popsicle a little more shimmery. And then I added sort of like a tie-dye background when I was done. So there's a lot you can do with this to really kind of make it your own. Okay. So thank you for letting me share all those. They just make me really happy. I think I'm going to have a little collage of popsicles in my house. <laughs> all right. So I'm turning my work and I am going to also lift this whole area right above or the top of these two indentations. So I'll show you which section here. So this is all red. So I don't necessarily have to clean my brush or blot it unless it's just not lifting color anymore and it's more just pushing color, which is okay to have a little bit of push. Um, but you want to do this whole area right here, just above both indentations. And I think I'm going to go over part of that again by cleaning my brush, blotting it, and then wiping and lift. And then we're also going to go down the entire left side edge of the left indentation. So remember just with each new color or each new stripe, clean your brush so you're not pulling too much blue onto the white or red onto the white. We want a little bit to darken things, um, but we don't want to turn the white stripe uh, blue or red. We just kind of want to use the blue and red to kind of darken up the gray. All right, and you can take your time with this. You can move quick. It's really up to you. And then we're gonna lift, lift a few more areas beyond what we're doing right now. Cause that's really gonna kind of help pull out the values. So we've now done, oh, I still have to do the bottom. We're also doing the bottom of the indentation. So we're kind of just making a big rectangle all around the indentations is what we're doing here. And get those curved edges too around the indentations. Isn't this fun? I just love this. I've been looking forward to this class for so long. I think I made this draft, Tim. You can tell me, I want to say it was like January or February. It was a while ago. I've been waiting for a good while to teach this class. <laughs> you actually, you made it some time ago. I was just waiting for the time when I could actually enjoy one of those ice pops when it got warmer out. So it's been some yes. time. <laughs> and, and some of you may not know this, these classes, like they're planned well in advance. Like I'm working on fall classes now, you know, so um, sometimes it takes some patience on my part to develop the class and then to have to, you know, to wait to teach it. So, all right. So now that we're done doing this sort of rectangle around the indentations, I'm now going to go on the right side of the left indentation and the left side of the right indentation. All right. So I hope that makes sense. You can see on this one, I just dumped water everywhere. Um, so you can see on this one how this is lifted and this is lifted. So that's where we're going to lift. And let me just clean up my working space where I just made a mess. I'm like the clumsiest person you'll ever meet. All right. So good thing I have other paper towels handy. All right. So I'm going to continue by lifting just to the right of the left indentation. And remember to try and remember to clean your brush as you move stripe colors. You can lift as much or as little as you want. You can use the paper towel to lift a little bit more if you want. This is just sort of a fun process, a gradual process. Someone just commented in the chat, no mistakes, just happy accidents. <laughs> That's true. I have a magnet that says that on my fridge. It's a good reminder. 
That's absolutely true. I have a friend, I have to share the story while I'm lifting this other line. So she was entering, or she's working on a piece of art and it was like a Harbor scene. And she accidentally dumped like a perfect drop of white gouache onto the artwork. And so she just called it day moon. I just thought it was so brilliant because it was a colored pencil piece with like, and it looked like it was intentional the way she worked around it. She couldn't get it off. She tried. So she just embraced it. And it was like the coolest piece of art. So yeah, we have, to, I think when we learn to embrace our mistakes, there's a lot of growth and freedom there. Okay. It happens to be one of the nice things with watercolor. I mean, you can just go over it again with some more color to, to almost make your corrections. I know, right? You can't even tell that I dumped anything on it. It cleaned up. No, really you can't see anything. I don't see anything. I don't yeah, know if anybody else sees anything. I don't see anything. My <laughs> on my end. table there. All right. So we have the, the first part of the lifting done. We are now going to lift the centers of each indentation. All right. So I'm not going to lift the inside edges of the indentation just through the middle. And you can kind of see that here, how I kind of did it just through the middle of each one. So I'm going to swish my brush, blot it. And then I'm just, I'm going to be a little more rough now uh, with these edges. I was very dainty. I'm going to maybe more like scrub at it with a um, hatching stroke technique uh, because we want it to be a little bit wider this time. And I'm going to do it to this white one. And you'll see, it wasn't a big deal that I put some gray there in the middle because it just sort of wipes right up. I'm going to do the same to the red and I'm going to show you how to clean up some of these edges too, because some of the little detail work we put in the lines drew a little hard or a little harsh, but we can easily soften those up. I'm going to show you how, but I'm going to do the middle of the indentations on the other side of the popsicle and do the red. It's hard for me not to move fast. I'll try to slow down here in case I'm moving fast for some of you, because this is the first time you've done this and I've been having a ball with it the past week as I've been practicing for today. <laughs> so all that up so you can see, that's what the centers of the indentations look like once you've lifted a little, you can take more off than that if you want. Um, and then you can see how, um, where I added the red on all of the edges of the red popsicle, how they look just a little harsh. They look a little, um, they're, they're hard edges is what we would call them in the art world. So I'm going to swish my brush. I'm going to do the same thing where I blot it on my paper towels so that it's wet, but it's not soaking wet. And then I can just gently run it on those edges and it will continue to add to the icy look and also soften them. So they're not so hard. So I can do that to any hard edges, just kind of take a slightly damp brush and, and run it over them so that it just sort of softens them. And I'm going to do it to the white stripe where I see some hard lines or edges and I'm going to do it to the blue stripe and it, it just adds to the look, honestly. All right. And then mine, my middle of my middles, they all bled into each other really nicely. So I don't have any harsh lines where the red meets the white or the blue meets the white. I do have a little bit here. I don't know if you can see that. That strikes me as kind of a, a hard edge. So I am going to soften that up just a little bit using that same technique and maybe even lift a little bit more from the inside of that indentation. And so now would be a good time where we could add some more of the dark colors to the inside edges of each indentation. So I can take some more of my red, my dark red that is. Oh, and I wanted to darken this up. I think I added water there when I made, when I had that little boo-boo. So I'm gonna <laughs> mix up some more red paint so it's not a wash and it is equal paint to water ratio. It's a little bit of a disaster over here. All right, so let me darken that up, get it. So it's equal paint to water ratio here. All right, and then I'm going to add more dark red to my red stripe. And this can be when you can start to correct some errors. Um, if your indentations are a little uneven, you can use your brushwork to sort of smooth things out. Um, so now would be a good time to make some of those corrections and adjustments. So there's a lot of room for adjustment on this piece. And the more dark you're going to add to these indentations, the more set down or recessed it is going to look. So just keep that in mind. Um, if you go too dark, it could look like the popsicle has like mild deep indentations. So you may not want to add another, you, you may want to add one more layer of dark to the indentations, but maybe not more than that. And then if you want, you can do that same technique where you just use a slightly damp brush to try and transition that dark edge into the rest of that indentation. I'll hold that up so you can see. 
And then I'm going to repeat with the gray. And I think I lost my gray, so I have to mix some more gray super fast. But in case you missed it the first time, I'm just going to add a little bit of white to my palette. And then I'm going to tint it with just a touch of alizarin crimson and just a touch of viridian green until I have a pretty mousy elephant gray. And then I'm going to use that to paint on the indentations on the white stripe. And then my dark blue was unaffected. So I can use the dark blue as is to darken the indentation on the blue stripe. And I'm just using the tip of my brush here so I get some nice thin lines. What I really like doing is I'll probably go over the indentations one more time, but I'll try to do the thinnest line possible just on the edge. So we still have some of what I've just done showing and then an even darker line showing on the very, very edge. Um, so that's one thing you can do here. And maybe I'll do that now because we are about done. This is really just sort of the um, adjustment phase. You can take off a little bit through that middle stripe if you want. Um, that's a total um, preference. If you like it being that solid color, you can have it be the solid color. I think I might just lift a little bit along the middle of the middle, but it's really your call. And then you can spend more time lifting around all the edges if you wanted. Um, you can take this as far as you want, this technique, do as much or as little as you would like. Um, but I'll show you what I mean by just adding a thin, thin line to each of the edges. And we are doing so good on time. I think this is like the first class where we've been so good on time. And I'm so excited because then I can show you a couple classes that are coming up if you want to take them. Um, but real quick, I'll just add a, a thin line once more to the red. And then I'll add some using as best I can the very, very tip of my brush. So it's just a nice thin line. This side is still a little wet, so it's bleeding in. So I'll probably have a little bit of cleanup work to do there. Well, I'll need to take my brush right along that edge to clean it up. But then the blue, just try and do a real thin line. Maybe on the bottom a little. So again, you can just take this as far as you want. And um, I should say, I haven't said this yet today. Uh, if you're not following me on social media and you have social media, I would love for you to follow me. I'm at Mandy Peltier Artist on Instagram and on Facebook. You can keep up to date with my Michaels classes if you want to take more Michaels classes with me. Um, you can just keep up to date on my art in general and um, my love of gardening. I do a lot of stories about gardening, so you can follow that too. And uh, one other thing I want to do is the popsicle. I want to pull just a little bit out of the popsicle as well. If you can see on my finished piece, I just pulled a couple thin lines from my popsicle. I want to do the same thing now. So it's the exact same technique. I'm just going to use the tip of my brush and just maybe do a, a couple of thin lines on the popsicle um, just to kind of give it that wood texture, that grain. And it's one of those things you can take off as much or as little as you want, but just a little bit off the popsicle stick to help it have that um, wood grain appearance. Okay, so let me show you what I have coming up this Friday. <laughs> so just a couple of days from now, I'm going to be teaching a class on this red hibiscus. And I will say the red hibiscus is not as quick as the popsicle. We will have to move pretty quick to squeeze it into the hour. Um, but this is really a layering technique where we're going to just do almost washes of color for each layer to gradually build up to this hibiscus that looks pretty photorealistic. Um, so join me on Friday if you would like. This class is at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so it's an hour earlier than what this one is today. And then on June, or sorry, July 13th, it's almost July, can you believe it? I'll be doing this just peachy artwork. It's peach season here in Georgia. We just went to uh, a peach market this weekend and bought a lot of peaches and I made peach crisp last night. So I am like in peach heaven right now. Um, so join me for this if you wanna learn how to paint peaches. And then I have some more classes coming up but I'm not ready to share them yet. Uh, if you have any class ideas, feel free to share them in the chat. We're always up for ideas on uh, techniques or um, things that you wanna learn how to, to draw. But yeah, I mean, at this point, really, it's just, you know, making little adjustments here and there. If I um, want to add more to the 
the inside edges of the recess sections I can. It's it's really just adjustment at this point, but um, yeah, this is it. Tim, I don't know if there's any other questions that people may have that I can answer. And no, I think that's good. Here. I um, I just, for everybody, for the last two ones you showed, I just dropped the links in there for people to sign up. A lot of people are saying they've already signed up for a lot of your classes already that are posted up there, which is really, really great. So we really want to see everybody back again. Uh, also, what else do we have on here? We are going to ask everybody if you can show it up and show your pieces in a few minutes as Mandy would love to see the work that you're working on right now. If you want to display that to us, we can take a look. And she's got a chance to be not painting right now, but look at what everybody else is doing. That'll be really cool. No one minds doing that. Yeah. Oh, hold them up for a long, long time. It's going to take me a minute to scroll through all these. And I wish I can make you guys bigger. Maybe I'll move you to my other monitor. Uh, okay. So I'm going to do gallery view. Hang on just a second here. Technical issues. Oh, my. Look at all those popsicles. Oh, I think wow. someone's from Italy. I see a red, white, and green. That's awesome. Uh, oh, I see a couple of those. Uh, that's awesome. I love it. Yeah, you can totally make this here. I mean, if you're from the UK or France, like you're set with the red, white, and blue, but otherwise, you know, you may have to make some adjustments there, but I love it. That's great. Love yeah. seeing everybody working alongside with you. So as, um, as Mandy said, you know, if anybody didn't do this along with her while she was teaching the class in 24 hours, the class will be reviewable on the YouTube channel, the Michaels channel. So you can go on there and check it out. I will make sure for everyone that the instructions do get loaded up as a link, as well as with the sketch as well. So you can follow along that way there. That'll be very helpful for everybody. And also, as Mandy mentioned a couple of times, I encourage everyone to follow her on Facebook, Instagram, and her website. She does have links to all her classes. It's a little bit easier. You might want to find out specifically what she's done in the past and upcoming classes that are coming up on Michael's as well. So you can just log into her site and get a little, little sneak preview of some of those things that are coming your way to take a look at. Uh, also, as is class tomorrow, you'll get a survey after this class. And we really encourage you to you know, rate us, let us know how we were doing. If you have some ideas of things that you'd like to see in the future, please put them in on, on that survey. I actually read every one of those comments that come back in after the classes and I'll discuss with Mandy. We can come up with some different ideas if people want to see botanicals or different types of fruit. People are seeing the ice pops on there. I saw some people saying uh, they love the, uh, the watermelon ice pop on there. So that's great. So give I us all your one. feedback. I have more how we're doing. After the peaches, sorry, Tim, I interrupted. After the peaches, I do have a couple more food classes coming up. So if that's up your alley, I won't release yet what they are, <laughs> but um, I like to eat. I don't know about you. So I'm always up for painting food. <laughs> I say tune into, tune into each one of the classes that Mandy's does. And we'll give you a preview of the next ones that come up the next two or so after that. So you can get a chance to see. I like how you think. Yes. And if you want to take my previous classes, if you go to my website, mandypeltier.com, if you go to the tab published tutorials, classes, and workshops, I have all of my previous Michael's classes embedded and you can just watch them from there or go to YouTube from there and download what you need to take the classes. So um, please share your finished work with me. I just saw little thumbnails of them in this class. I'd love to see them um, larger. So tag me on uh, social media or email me. You can email me through my website. Um, so I, I would just love to see your work. So thanks for spending the hour with me. This, these are really like the highlight of my week and I can't believe I have another one on Friday. So I hope I'll see you there and um, have a great rest of your week. Thank you everyone.